Scanning documents with barcodes is the most powerful feature of Visual Archive. First of all, let's take a look at our scanner. I'm going to go to Scan, select Scanner, and I have my Canon P150 in the list here. If your list is empty, uh, you might want to make sure your scanner's turned on or else you might have to make sure the driver is installed correctly. I'm going to click Select. Now I'm going to go to Scan, Scanner Setup. Now for this mode, I'm going to make sure I choose the black and white mode. That is the most efficient way of storing the documents in the database. If you use something like grayscale or color, you're going to have about 8 to 24 times the storage space uh, required. Next will be the dots per inch. 200 dpi is adequate. Um, sometimes you know, 300 dpi can also be used, but uh, I'm going to use 200 dpi. You shouldn't really need to go more than 300 and anything less than 200 you might have a little bit of difficulty reading some of the barcodes so 200 dpi is a real good setting to use and I'm gonna click OK here and next I'm going to open up the scan window there's two ways of getting there I can go to scan I'll scan auto file right here in the menu or there's a shortcut on the toolbar right here scan and then scan auto file so here is my scan window and there's a few settings in here to choose from like you can choose single sided or duplex in my case I have duplex selected because I have a duplex scanner and I'm going to be scanning both sides of the documents down here there's a setting for blank page deletion so even if you are scanning duplex but not every page has something on the back side that's okay because it's going to automatically throw out those blank pages um, another setting that we can choose is to show scanner settings before scanning but we're not going to do that because we already just looked at the scan settings we don't need to look at them again and finally here's one other uh, setting that you might find useful it's this missing barcodes file with previous document what that means is any documents that don't have barcodes will automatically be filed with the previous document and I'm just going to show you what I mean there um, here's a picture of my scanner and here are my documents that I'm going to scan. Here's my shop order. It's got the barcode in the upper right corner. And let's see. After the barcode, I have this certification. I've got some handwritten results that I wanted to scan in. So I'm going to scan this certification in. And if you notice, there's no barcode. Well, that checkbox that we selected over here with missing barcodes, file with previous documents. So what that means is when Visual Archive encounters this page without a barcode it's just going to automatically file that page with the previous document which in this case will be our order number right here with this barcode on it so I have the certification got the purchase order on there let's see I've also got an invoice and then um, finally here's my next order number and back here I wanted to show one other thing I've got shipping tickets on here your shipping tickets can also have barcodes on them and then be filed and indexed automatically. So what I'm going to do now is take this and I'm going to stick these in the scanner. This is uh, a Canon scanner and those typically are face down in the upside down fashion as I stuck these in right here. And what I'm going to do now is go over here to my scan documents window and I'm going to press scan. And what this is going to do now is it's going to take these pages one at a time and it's going to read them. And if we go over to well, move this over just a little bit, we can see here on the Visual Archive window, it's reading these items page by page as it's scanning them. And one of the things I did. I wanted to show you this part right here. What I did was actually obscured one of the barcodes on the page it's just to show you what happens if Visual Archive can't read the barcode. So in this case right here I have this page that Visual Archive saw a barcode but it did not pick up a pattern that it recognized. So what it's doing then is it's pulling up this, uh, this little uh, pop-up window that's asking you to put in the barcode value. And if you notice in here it says 1142-1 it's already putting in the value of the previous red barcode just in case uh, you know it happens to be the same number which in most cases it probably will be but what I can do here is click view image and that'll actually pull up a a window here where you can zoom in and actually read the order number right off of that if you want which is 1142 and load 1 um, here you can see the barcode actually what I did was taped a 
different barcode over the top of the original barcode. Uh, otherwise, I can actually even read it right from here, 1142-1, but it's already listed in this box as 1142-1, so I can just click OK, and then it continues with the filing. And now I get this message saying the scanning is complete. So, I'm going to click Close here, and I've as I see right here, I've got these four files now. This says files in archive stage. It's these four files. I'm going to click auto file. And those should be all stored into the database now. So I'm going to go to tools and document search. And I'm going to click search. And I see here now I've got, uh, looks like these top four documents that I have scanned in here. I'm going to click these. Here's my shipping ticket that I just scanned. I'm going to go back over here. Here's another shipping ticket. Okay, this one did pick up some of my, I guess, bleed through on my uh, signature on the back side. So it did actually store the back side of that, um, of that page. And I'm going to look at my shop orders here. Here's my 1145-1. Uh, so here's my page of the, uh, of the actual shop order. Then here's that certification. And as I scroll down, there should be more pages. And here, yep, here's my purchase order. Here's the quotation. And then finally the invoice. I had all those behind that very first page of the shop order. And here's my other shop order that I sc uh, scanned. Here's page one. Here's page two. You can notice the barcode was uh, pasted over. And then here's the certification for that shop order. Now, one other thing I'd like to mention is the barcode zones. And what you can actually do is set the target area on the bar on the page of where you want Visual Archive to read the barcode. So I'm going to go into Visual Archive here. I'm going to close the document search window. I'm going to go to Maintenance and go to Settings. And this is where you can set your barcode zone. I'm going to click this plus here for barcode zone shop order. And I see a bunch of values here, you know, left, right, top, bottom, width, and height. I'm going to go over to my document again here in my PDF reader. And what I did was I displayed the ruler across the top. So here goes from 0 to 8.5 and then 0 to 11 well, along the length here. So my barcode is right here. I'm going to be looking for something, let's say, I like to scan a little bit larger size than what the actual barcode is just to account for any printing differences or any other variations that might take place. But so, And here I'm going to look for maybe about the area starting at about 5.5 inches and go to well, roughly 8 inches, maybe even 8.5. And, and then on the length side, I'm going to start at 0 and go maybe to about 1.5 or maybe even 2. Uh, we'll see. But uh, I'm going to go back into my settings then. I'm currently set at 5.5 to 8.5 and then 0 to 1.5 along the bottom. So. I'm just going to keep those settings. They're pretty close to what I would consider the ideal target range. So as long as it's pretty close. The idea behind this barcode zone is just to eliminate the possibility of picking up another barcode somewhere on the page. Even if there isn't a, an actual barcode on the page, sometimes Visual Archive could possibly pick up some of these lines or any other information on the page and might think it's a barcode and then give you a false reading. So the idea behind the zone is really to just eliminate any errors that might take place or at least minimize the errors. So this is my shop order barcode zone. I can also do the same thing with my shipping ticket. So here again I have my ruler on here and in this case I'm looking for it looks like about the bottom inch so like from 10 to 11 on the shipper and then maybe from about 3 to about 6 or so on the length or across the, the width of the page. You go back over to the barcode zone here for shipper. And I'm looking at 2 to 7. You know, um, I could probably change those to, let's say, 3 to... Okay, I'm going to start at 3 and I'm going to go up to about 6 on this one. So I'm going to go 3 to 6 and I'm going to keep this 10 to 11 here. We're just going to look at the bottom one inch of the page. So I'm going to click OK here. 
So that's how I set those barcode zones. Once you set those once, you really should never need to change those again unless you happen to do a major form change where your barcode was totally relocated to a different spot on the page. So this is how you scan documents into Visual Archive.